loves. It's Tiana from Natural Lore. Hey, it's your girl Jana from Naturally Planned TV. And welcome to another episode of Curls Culture Couture. If you've been following us, I know it seems like we've been on a hiatus, but we've had a lot of stuff going on in our individual lives. So um, we're glad to be back and Yay. filming again. Woo -woo. Basically for me, I have ventured out and started doing freelance makeup on the side. So that's been taking up a lot of my time and I also have a family. So that's also been taking up a lot of my time. We can never give up on Curls Culture Couture because I think I, I enjoy it. I know Jonna does too. And we enjoy talking to you guys and bringing you the topics and giving our opinion because everybody has an opinion. But um, jonna has been pretty busy too. She's been out yes. of town the last two weekends. What you been doing, Jonna? <laughs> well, first I went to World Natural Hair Shows for the first time. So, we're gonna And she flew on a plane, guys. Yeah, I wasn't even gonna say that. I wasn't gonna say anything about that. <laughs> so, somebody out there might give you the encouragement. Okay, well, yes, I'll play. It was in Atlanta, so I did have to fly. So it was my first time flying, and I think everybody else was a lot more freaked out about it than I was. I was actually totally fine and actually had an absolute blast on the plane. I thought it was like the best thing ever. And then this past weekend, I was a speaker at um, the Blogger Week Unconference, which Blogger Week is put on by Black Bloggers Connect, which is like a network of uh, African American and Pan American bloggers it's based out of dc and so they had the event there so i was able to go to that on behalf of eating body works and then for the saturday conference i was the speaker i actually met with the person that runs the baltimore um film festival and so your girls have been invited to come oh, and participate because of this little thing here called Curls, Culture, and Couture. Oh, shucks. So, oh, that was the good news that I didn't tell you. <laughs> she just told me on camera, guys. <laughs> That's what I didn't tell you. <laughs> what? Yeah, so, which is really cool because we were talking about how YouTube has really changed the film industry and the fact that people feel like that all they need is a camera and they can make these great films and tell these great stories. And so when I was talking to him, I was telling him about how I have this web series with another blogger called Curls Culture Couture and what it was about. And he was like, that's really, really cool. And so when I connected with him after the, the event to hear more about the film festival, which is in October in Baltimore, and he was like, I would love to have you guys come out and be a part of the panel to talk about how you guys create your web series, your talk show online. So it's really, really cool. I wasn't sure, John, were you out of town when the Mayweather fight took place? Yes, the Mayweather fight was the same weekend as Blogger Week and we were not going to pay anybody any types of Don't. dimes to see that fight and we were actually going to the girls that I went with we were actually going to pitch in and buy the fight and just watch it at the hotel but then we were like nah you know we just kind of say you know what forget it we'll just we'll just hear about it and, and good thing that they did not so I'm glad we did because I heard it was I watched it. I didn't pay for it. I went to a fight party. It was actually my uncle's birthday and he got the fight. Well, my cousin got the fight for him as a present. And you know, I actually, honestly, I have not watched a fight in a very long time. I like boxing. It's just not my thing to be like, oh, I gotta go watch it. But I'm like, everybody's talking about the biggest fight of the century. They've been trying to get these guys to fight for years. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of money on the table. What's it, what's it gonna hurt? So opening up you got jamie fox <laughs> singing the national anthem poor baby we all know that jamie can sing everybody has bad days so i ain't even gonna it, it to me it's pointless you know he did a he had a bad performance but we all know jamie can blow so that's so neither here nor there because when the little snippet i heard where he said hallelujah no that was at the end it didn't sound so that, bad so that i was, was like the, is this what everybody was talking that about that was at the end but when he okay. came out he immediately took his earpiece out so i think sound it has something to do with the sound he couldn't hear the music in his ear that has a lot to do with performers as yes, well they need that sound in their ear but as soon as he got up there he took it out so something must have been going on then he said it was a lot of people in there which it was and he was like the crowd it just something was going on with that but you know i'm gonna give him a pass because jamie can sing so i ain't mad but that was just like the topper to it so you got these fighters uh mayweather and pacquiao who people have been waiting forever to see and you go 12 rounds and it's 12 rounds of dipping and dodging and pacquiao was just like 
hitting his little heart out. I mean, I can't even remember his numbers, but he was up there. Like, him and Floyd had, like, the same... Their numbers were very close, mm -hmm. but Pacquiao threw a lot more punches than Mayweather did. And Mayweather is a very good defensive fighter. I think that's why he is now 48-0, and 0 because it's like, you can't touch him. He's like Hammer in the ring. You just can't touch him. They tr He tried to get him in the corner, and it wasn't working. But for me, I felt slighted because I'm like, well... These guys made a lot of money. I don't know if you guys know the digits, but it was something to the sum of $86,000 per second. Mayweather was making at least that much. The longer he stayed in the ring, the more money he stood to win. And I just feel like both of these guys are good fighters in their own right. But I feel kind of gypped. I felt like they were going to really get in there and give the people a show. And that's not what I felt. I felt like the fight was garbage. I checked on Twitter, checked on Facebook, and I saw that a lot of people felt like the fight really wasn't worth the hype. Like, this fight was, what, $100? So that's $100 in what? How, 12 rounds? You got, what, 30 minutes, 40 minutes of your life? You just cannot never get back. You know, so I felt it. I was a little gypped. I really didn't like how Mayweather was very cocky at the end, but that's what he's known for at the end of the day. But he already knew he won. And then you got Pacquiao, poor baby, over here in the corner. He just wanted to give the glory to God, and he wanted to do it for the Philippines. And he, when they announced the winner, he said, I thought I won. He was really convinced that he thought that he won. And it was just, to me, I felt like it was more of the publicity. It was more of the hype. <laughs> Did you guys hear about the young lady who snuck in Chris Brown's house while he was gone to Vegas during this fight? As if the boy doesn't already have enough issues with his alleged assault issues that took place during, I think it was a basketball game in, yeah, in Vegas or something like that. But he comes home and there's this girl that's hardcore chilling in his house. They made herself some food. They made herself at home. Put her way. stuff out. Put the, put the baby, baby stuff, stuff out. out. The put the dog, dog stuff, stuff out. out. And vandalized his car. Wrote some I love you type situations. And when he got back, his security, of course, they're going to sweep the premises to make sure nobody is in there. And they find her in his bed. That's some crazy. What do you do when you come home and you find you just somebody in your bed? You just and moving. <laughs> keep up with what's going on this season nico's wife is now on the show you know kurt has this little boo shorty that's supposed to be his artist and he has a new apartment that's supposed to it's be an office, office but a bed in it and um stevie J and jocelyn are in and out of rehab and 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 scrappy's not paying child support mama d is singing Young her senior Young career and she's back with her ex-husband that she put in jail but now they're back together now that he's home mm -hmm. young jock got a lot of baby mamas and he's still sleeping with all of them trying to juggle that and it's not working out too good for him carly red um, opening up boutique carly red opening up the store behind erica's back because she's supposed to be opening the store with erica it's not the fact that she went and opened a boutique without erica that's mm -hmm. not the problem the problem is you didn't communicate that to erica mm -hmm. and let her know what was going on so y'all can have that communication find out what's the delay erica is and Rashida, they were real messy for going in and knocking on stuff because to me that was so petty. At the end of the day, stay classy. Keep mm -hmm. it classy. Don't let anybody being petty, which you all know Carly is petty, mm -hmm. don't let her being petty make you look petty. This is the thing about reality TV. And me and Tiana was talking about this and she has a video on her channel where she's talking about when is reality TV? When is it too much? And when do you just gotta like, you know, tune out of this reality TV? Well, we both know we're guilty. We we do like to watch reality TV. But my thing is, I understand that Purely clearly it's entertainment and that they do stuff that's wrong. Like, what, what people mess up is they watch reality TV and they think that's how they're supposed to handle situations. That's not how you handle situations. Like, half of the time on reality TV... Whoever they handle the situation is really not how you should handle the situation. And that's why hands get thrown, tables get shook, 
and bottles get smacked over heads. Like that's why because the people are not handling things like they should. Right. It cracks me up because I'm like, do people really think that that's that's a boss move? Nah, that's how you do it, girl. You just no. People who want to be successful, you cannot hang around with people like that because it's going to do what? Leave you in that same circle of ratchet people that you hang around with or people who don't know how to act and you will never get anywhere because true professional people do not want to see people coming into their business establishment knocking over stuff. That's just not how you handle situations so in childish. real life. People don't live like that for real. That's not real. Stuff like that get yeah. people hurt. Yeah, exactly. That's just <laughs> the truth and the reality of it. But if you're guilty of watching it like we are, tell us who your favorite people are. Do you love Erica? Do you think that they were right for going in there? Or do you like that's Aline? Or Jocelyn? That's Aline. That's Aline. If you guys were like us and you checked out the red carpet of the Met Gala, then you would have seen some of these lovely ladies or not so lovely ladies that we have it on our favorite segment, Rock It or Stop It. All right, so we can go ahead and get started with the first lady of the night. I'm sure she was on everybody's timeline, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything. Miss Beyonce Knowles Carter. I like the dress, Jonna. I thought it was very revealing. Not something I would personally wear. I think she's trying to like push the envelope. And this one kind of took me a little out of my comfort zone. You think she's getting in touch with I her, Beyonce? I just really, yeah, I think she just really did the most. I just think she's much... This dress is not as classy mm -mm. as I like to see Beyonce. So is it a rock it or stop it? I would I would say stop it. We're gonna say rock it. Not because not she horrible. doesn't look good. Yeah. She looks amazing. It looks amazing. It's just not what I want to see her in. So I'll have to say stop it. We're gonna say rock it because I wouldn't always say. And she it, says rock it. it. Rock it. So we'll rock. Rock. rock I'll stop it. Rock it. So next up we have Katy Perry and she is always oh so colorful and I think she was more going for a Cars theme than anything but um I almost didn't recognize her. I've never seen her with short hair like yeah, this. I've never seen her with short hair. More, yeah which... so I think she's looking very classy in the face area but the dress is like yeah I don't know. It's got a lot going on. I don't like the can of spray paint purse <laughs> that's so... <laughs> It's a gala. Generally, that term would, you know, not call for this type of outfit. But, you know, it's Katy Perry. So, I mean, you know. You know, you expect she certain things good, from certain it? people. Yeah, it's a nice, the dress is fitted good and everything like and that. I think the dress in and of itself is fun. I think if she would have just yeah. kept it with the dress and not the purse, too, I think that is what took it over the top. Yeah. I don't know, but I guess we can kind of say rock it because the face I and everything else is, is, I is slamming. So we're moving on to Kendall Jenner and she looks very classy in this uh, green number. The back was out. Um, I'm pretty sure if you saw it on your timelines, it's not pictured. It's not shown in this picture, but her back was out. It was very classic to me. It wasn't over the top. It wasn't a lot. She kept it very simple. The hair was simple. You can't really see the shoes, but I think she did a very good job. She looks very nice and classic yes, in this. Absolutely love it. So we give you a rocket. Rocket. Our boo. Carrie always up oh. here getting stopped. Oh, Carrie Washington, what She's in the world? Stopped. What in the ham sandwich is going on with this dress? You look I, like somebody's horrible cake topping on their wedding. I yeah, like the so dress. Long. I just don't like the way it fits. And this always seems like it's the story. With the bows on the, on the side too? If that, look. You I talking think, about on the sleeve? No, right, yeah, right there. Even, you know what? I it would have been if it perfect. Was fitted properly, the neckline is too high. I love how she's always doing the mix of colors. So yeah, I love, I love those green, green shoes. And the green purse, I absolutely love it. But the dress, I just don't feel like, I feel like she put it on. I don't feel like it was fit to her. Yeah, I, I just feel, feel like she just yeah, put it on. It's just not a good look for you, Carrie. We're gonna have to say stop, yeah, stop it. it. So next up, we have the lovely Zoe Kravitz. She's looking oh so timeless in this number and showing a lot of skin, but not too much skin, but a little bit of skin. Um, I like it. I think that it's age appropriate since we're talking about people being able to, you know, maybe just bear it all and maybe <laughs> not bear too much. But I think it's very age appropriate for her. And, you know, it's Lenny Kravitz's and Lisa Bonet's daughter, man. She's, she's dope. 
just in and of itself. She's just, she looks very nice here. What do you think? I'm going to give her a rocket because it's her style. You can tell it's her style. You know, if you know how, you know, what her style is, you can tell it's almost like Lenny Kravitz, Lisa Bonet. They both have like that, like that style. <laughs> and it may not be your style, but mm -hmm. it's theirs. And you know, that they, 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 it looks good on them, mm -hmm. even if it's not something you would wear. It's the same thing. I mean, this may not be something that I particularly like, but it looks good on her and it fits her personal style. Mm -hmm. So I'll give her a, um, I will give her a rocket on that. You definitely get definitely. a rocket. So we thank you for joining us for this episode. If you see anything here that you'd like to comment on and start a conversation with us about, please leave us a comment below. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Curls Culture Couture. And if you'd like to be featured, email us at Curls Culture Couture at gmail.com or you can hashtag Curls Culture Couture on Instagram to be featured, you lovely, lovely ladies and gentlemen. So that does it for this episode. As always, we love that you tune in. We love that you rate, comment, and subscribe and share these videos so we can bring you many, many more videos. And until next time, you know what to do. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Here it come. Here it come, y'all. <laughs>